Hello YouTube, this is Nkiroxon and welcome to my channel. Today I'm taking this not so beautiful, uh, let's just call it Fugly One spaceship to Lathy. I think that's what it, how it's pronounced, a planet that has oxygen. And I, I have this uh, plane set up with ion engines, but there's also um, a huge jet engine that will take us to the upper atmosphere. So let's just start from here. You can see I added some wings because I didn't have enough wings before and it didn't fly as well, but this is the minimal wings I could add for it to fly and for me to have a, a small enough weight to basically make it to Jules system. So here we go, we're about to take off and we can do it, yep, we can do it. Uh, it needs a huge uh, boost in velocity to, to even get up to um, basically to start flying. But if I had added a little bit more wings, I would be able to fly a lot easier. But I, it, this was a, a issue with too much, having too much weight. And anyway, so here we go. We're flying up to the sky. Uh, the way uh, that um, these SSTOs work, the ones that you, where you mix a jet engine and ion engine, and the way they work is you have to basically use a normal jet engine, um, not the uh, repair one and you would basically go up to 20 kilometers and then level out and try to boost your velocity as high as you can you can see me burning out because i was going a little bit too fast uh, but you slowly climb to 30 kilometers at which point you still should have uh, enough um, air intake to, to to function to have your engine functioning and when, in my case i added quite a lot of air intakes on the sides you can see that that's really what makes this plane kind of ugly because there's so many air intakes but at 30 kilometers it was still able to kind of boost a little bit more speed and here's here i am flying uh at 30 kilometers pretty fast and trying to increase my speed and at this point uh, at 33 kilometers it's quite safe to actually start releasing your um solar panels and one of them got stuck unfortunately so i had to manually release it and i had four really large extra large ones um, for my six ion engines and a few more panels on top just in case um, I was under a, uh, a bad angle or something to, to, uh, to the sun so that there wouldn't be enough energy. And this actually, uh, those solar panels on top saved me quite a lot of times where I would just have a shadow or something and uh, one of the big solar panels would be covered so I wouldn't have enough energy to, to, um, to boost my speed. But here uh, the uh, repair engine is off. So another repair engine. The jet engine is off and this is me boosting my speed with ion engines only and this is essentially how you get into the lower atmosphere, uh, lower atmospheric orbit. Uh, just using pure ion engines, nothing else. And because I had um, delta V of about approximately 8,000, even more than 8,000 I think, it gave me kind of enough, um, enough delta V to not only get into orbit but even play around a little bit with it and uh, circularize it as perfect as possible. So um, this design is not the best in the world, it's only a prototype, but it worked pretty well. I, I was able to easily get it into, into lower or, um, Earth orbit, sorry, lower carbon orbit uh, several times in a row without any glitches, without any, any problems. Um, and usually at around 35 kilometers, it's, it's quite safe to start using solar panels. They don't actually, uh, ha there's not enough air friction or um, air pressure to basically damage them. And this is my last boost to, to circularize my orbit. Um, at this point, I was at approximately 145 kilometers above Kerbin. And this was the last um, last maneuver before I, I was a, I was ready to escape the Kerbal atmosphere, Kerbal orbit. So it's almost circular, it's almost completely perfectly circular. And at this point, I decided to start calculating my Joule transfer. And this is me transferring to Joule. Um, I was, I didn't find a perfect time slot, so I actually had to use a little bit more Delta V than I wanted to. I think this was approximately 2500 Delta V to get to Joule. Um, I think the smallest amount is approximately 1900, but you can even play around with this and get a lower Delta V. Uh, and here I wanted to basically shoot toward Joule and approach it and then um, do some orbital correction so that I can actually land on Lathy. Or is that Lathy or Lathe? I'm not even sure. Anyway, so this is the boring part where I basically fly for about three years and do absolutely nothing. And uh, my commander is waiting f to arrive to to the to his destination. Okay. Anyway, so this is Jewel um, approaching Jewel really really fast. 
basically this is speed up, speed up. And um, here I aimed for Lethe and you see it in the distance right there approaching quite slowly. And as soon as I um, was able to uh, get an intercept orbit with Lethe, I was aiming for periapsis of approximately 13, 13 or 12 kilometers because I knew I was going to be coming in really, really fast. I think the speed of approach was approximately 8 kilometers per second. So if you actually aim straight at it, you will probably crash and die. So um, here I'm approaching at just over 8 kilometers per second. And I believe... Oh, look at this. This plane is so beautiful. Um, and I believe uh, my plane was actually... Uh, even with that speed, it was actually flipping all over the place. You'll see it in a second. My space plane was kind of struggling to survive such a fast approach. And if you're playing with certain mods that actually destroy your spaceship, if you're approaching too fast, you will not be able to survive this. Um, so you do have to use air braking with Jewel before you can even approach Lethe. Anyway, so here, here I am falling directly onto the planet, but it's actually, it's not a direct fall, it's actually, um, it, there's a periapsis of about 3, no, 13 kilometers, I believe. There you go, 9 kilometers. And, um, I was I was actually lucky enough to approach this islander here, and I did have a parachute for uh, to slow myself down. And actually, originally I was going to use the parachute to descend very slowly, and then land onto my uh, the back of my wings, and and then just fall uh, onto my belly, and hopefully survive the fall and just put, fall onto my gear. Unfortunately for me, all of this terrain here is so rocky. It's you'll see me fail several times trying to land here but i didn't actually look at the Lathe's map before I, I arrived here but essentially all of these islands on Lathe are rock lands there's really very very few if any um flatlands but i decided to cut my parachute and just go ahead and start flying around um looking for a flat surface to land um so because this planet has oxygen you can easily use jet engines on it and they work so much better than on Perbin. They actually are more, a lot more efficient. You can fly a lot more faster. And because the atmosphere on Lathe is not as thick and is not as um, high as Kerbin, you can actually uh, achieve some crazy speeds at pretty low velocities. So for the next hour or so, I actually was flying around exploring the planet. Not because I wanted to explore, but because I couldn't find a place to land. Luckily, uh, I had quite a lot of fuel. I actually had more than 70% when I landed, and I ended up having more than 40% when I finally landed somewhere. But here's me failing at several attempts, uh, or failing to land. So this is my first approach with a parachute. Landing on the mountain, probably not the best idea in the world. Uh, using my jet engines to slow down, and then bouncing off. And yeah, so that's not a good plan. And uh, that happened a few times actually. I was trying. I, I thought I saw. I, I saw some kind of a flat land. I was trying to approach it from a distance, and ended up landing in this desert. But just so happens that um, the game is uh, really picky with how flat terrain works here. So even though I thought it was flat, it was actually not very flat at all. So um, I failed quite a lot of times trying to land. And in retrospect, I really shouldn't have put those. Um, f uh, those angular wings on the bottom because that's really what caused me to fail so many times. They were just making me flip every every single time, over and over again. Even when I was thought I had it, when I was trying to approach it uh, from several different positions, several different angles, it still kind of flipped and destroyed my ship. Anyway, so this is me trying to survive, but uh, no, still not making it. And basically everyone dies. By everyone, I mean my major pilot. Anyway, so I decided to just fly around a little bit more. And then I realized, hey, this planet has it has um, ice caps. And ice caps are totally flat. And it's so beautiful here. Look at how beautiful it is. There's a... Um, uh, what do you call it? Northern Lights or Southern Lights. A jewel in the back. Sun. Uh, or Sol. Um, or Kerbal. Whatever it's called. But this is me landing, finally landing onto the flat um, ice caps because there was no other place to land and this was actually a very easy landing because it's absolutely flat here. So I was finally able to get out, unfortunately place my door on the other side but that's another question that's going to be, my prototype number 2 will have a door on the right angle. Um, but here we go, I'm going to place my flag and yay lady we are here with the SSTO. Uh, and I still have enough fuel to basically explore a little bit more 
um, enough ion fuel to even possibly land on another um, satellite of Jewel, but that's maybe for another video. Instead, we're just going to go ahead and head home. So here we go, taking off uh, from ice caps on Lady, and uh, this is it really. This the rest of the trip is just a return back home. So here, um, very carefully trying to take off without destroying my wings. And the next step is to get to approximately 10 to 15 kilometers, start straightening out your orbit, and achieve, um, I believe it's, I needed to achieve about 18 meters per second speed to get into orbit around Leite. This was actually a lot easier than doing it on Kerbin, and uh, saved me a lot of fuel as well, because um, it's not as difficult actually, and because I had so many air intakes, I could actually easily achieve orbit without even using my iron engines. But this is such a beautiful takeoff, look at that, there's all these uh, northern and southern lights here, beautiful jewel in the distance, and the sun, this is almost like a screenshot worthy picture. Um, but uh, the cool thing about using ion engine hybrid SSTOs is that you basically are now able to fly to almost any, any, any body in the system using your ion engines and on certain planets, well not certain planets, but really on Lady you can actually use your jet engine as well to navigate to land and to explore. Unfortunately, they don't, jet engines don't really work anywhere else, so if you, um, if you head out to planets like Dune, uh, you may want to uh, instead attach more ion engines. I was actually, I'm actually planning to do this in my next uh, design, basically attach a bunch of ion engines and use ion engines as um, essentially as the source of my orbital velocity to, to try to get um, out of the um, dune atmosphere into the orbit using nothing but ion engines. Unfortunately, it's impossible to do that on Kerbin because uh, on Kerbin the gravity is high enough that um, ion engines don't have uh, a requ required thrust to weight ratio, but on Dune they do, so that's that's actually something I'm planning to do in my next video. But here we go, uh, we're escaping Jules uh, orbital system and heading back to Kerbin. I believe I had approximately 25% um, iron fuel left, xenon gas left. And this was enough for me to uh, to basically put an intercept orbit on Kerbin. And here we go. This is Kerbin. This is with, uh, almost no uh, xenon fuel left, but quite a lot of um, actual um, what do we call it, jet, jet engine fuel left. And burning into the atmosphere. I forgot to remove my uh, solar panels. Manually removing them. I think one of them actually broke off at the end. But it's not really important anymore because now we just need to use our jet engine to try to land. I used my parachute here to slow down and unfortunately uh, this was an uncontrolled intercept so I didn't really um, enter atmosphere anywhere near my uh, Kerbal Space Center so I just essentially had to find a place to land and this was a search for flatlands and it just so happens that this uh, this region right here had quite a lot of flatland, so I just needed to approach it really carefully because I was landing in, in the dark, it was really hard to see my shadow. And here we go, very close to approach, lost my wing, but who needs it anyway, we're almost there. Didn't need that wing anyway. And landing, slowly approaching land surface. And there we go, so just all we have, we have to do now is carefully slow down and almost there so close to home now and there we go and that was my first uh, SSTO trip from Lathy uh, no sorry from Kerbin to Lathy and back and that is it anyway thank you for watching this is Kerbal Space Program this has been Antirxon with an SSTO trip of epic proportions or not so epic proportions but it was pretty cool uh, it was my first official Lathy trip with return uh, return trip within the same spaceship. Thank you for watching, please subscribe, and good luck to you. Game you later, alligators. Bye-bye.